Have you just started out in podcasting or are you still waiting to hit that magical thousand download milestone? Look no further. With Lazy Pod Club, our exclusive membership for podcast dreamers and creators, you'll get the inside information and knowledge that you need on achieving your first thousand downloads and beyond. Just $9.99 a month. Unlock unedited guest episodes, changing how-to guides, essential checklists and exclusive masterclasses designed to propel your podcast to success. Join our community where you can connect with me, Verity, host of the Lazy Girls Guide to Podcasting and fellow podcasters. Share your experiences, ask burning questions, and let's celebrate every win, no matter how big or small. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to hit that thousand download milestone and beyond. Visit veritysonggone.com slash membership and let's elevate your podcast together. Welcome back to the Lazy Girls Guys of Podcasting. We're here again for another Tech Thursday episode. In our Tuesday episode for this week, we spoke to Krista from She Calls Her Shots podcast. And Krista is a wedding and brand photographer. And we talked all about how we can get the best photographs for our podcast artwork and promotional materials. If you've not listened to that episode yet, then do go back and listen to it first. Because today we are moving on and we are back with Krista. And in this episode, she is going to dive into her top tips and strategies for taking your own branded photographs. However, before we dive into this, I wanted to share this amazing review I got from Destiny on LinkedIn. She messaged me saying, I listened to this podcast today as I prepare to start my own podcast. It was very informative. I'm looking forward to listening to more episodes. Well, thank you so much, Destiny. I love reading all of your comments and reviews. So please keep them coming in. Might even shout you out on the podcast in the future. But right now, let's jump back into our conversation with Krista. A lot of listeners who are thinking, yeah, this is all well and good talking about like hiring a professional brand photographer. And I'd love to, I'd love to drop however much my local brand photographers, you know, charge or whatever. If somebody is thinking, look, I would love to do some brand photography. I want to get an amazing image for my podcast artwork, but I just, I, I just can't go down the route of getting a brand photographer at this moment in time. What advice would you have for somebody? Yeah. So actually, funny enough, when we're recording this, my current podcast art, I took that photo myself on my cell phone outside in my backyard. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I have done this and I know that it's just sometimes it's the more tactical, like I just need something right now that fits my brand. And so I, I mean, literally I could talk about this all day, but I think the key thing, like one thing you will want to get is either someone who is comfortable and you feel comfortable around that can take some photos for you that you can give some direction to, or if you don't have that, like I didn't have that, you can have a, just a cell phone, like a holder. So just something that you can use and put it on burst mode and and being able to take the photos yourself. I would say the best, again, I kind of said this earlier, but a really crucial thing is lighting. And I think the easiest place for us to get good light, just go outside. So whether it's in your backyard, your front yard, wherever it is, um, inside can be fine if you have a ton of windows and you have all this window light, right? But like that just sometimes gets a little bit trickier. So if you're just like, I need a really good photo of myself, I think bring a chair or bring a stool or bring something outside, get yourself in really good lighting, put your phone up on a stand or something. And again, having done the research, right? Do I want to be sitting cross-legged with something in my hands? Like take a couple varieties of it. Canva has an option to remove the background from images. That's what I did for my, again, coming back to making it as easy as possible. I literally just pulled the image so you can't see my house into Canva, remove the background and then slapped it on my podcast cover. So um, I think that's a really great tool that they have and it doesn't require any sort of skills of design. So being able to do something like that, put yourself in good light, use any props that you think are relevant. The whole key here is we just want to build trust. And so having really good lighting, a warm, welcoming, like smile or just, a, you know, an, a frontward angle where people can really see your eyes and your face and um, slap it in, remove the background if you want, and then put yourself on your cover art somewhere. But um, I think that's really going to be the easiest way and the easiest approach that you can do that in a couple of hours, max. Yeah, absolutely. And I love what you're saying about if you can try and get somebody to you know, help you as well, because also it's nice to have it. You might feel really self-conscious, but it is nice to have that second set of eyes just to, in my case, be like Verity, you've lost all of your neck because of how you've positioned your head (laughs) or like it saves doing like, I don't know, 
a hundred images and you're like, yeah. oh, I still can't get this right. Because if you're like me, you blink every three seconds. And I don't know what it is. As soon as there's a camera in front of me, I can't stop blinking, including like iPhones. It's very, very annoying for getting a good image. But if you, you know, if you're aware that that is also, is also you, it's just nice to have a second set of eyes because you're obviously well first set of eyes because obviously you can't look at yourself right would you recommend using the selfie part of your phone or actually turning around and using the kind of like quote-unquote proper camera on the it? actual proper camera is always better and that's what makes it a little bit tricky for example when I was doing mine I had it on the cell phone holder but facing like the back the actual camera so I can't actually see what I look like um so yeah definitely using that one because it's going to be a higher quality I mean iPhones are getting better but I still think the front facing camera is not as high quality but if that's also though you also probably don't want your arm in it so if you have it on a a selfie stick (laughs) you could I mean like maybe your brand is for Gen Z and like really feeling that like selfie connection then great but um, but yeah, I would definitely uh, recommend looking at the specs on your phone and seeing which one is high resolution and just going with that one. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, it's thinking about the lighting and things like that. Should you be facing like into the sun, away from the sun? Because yeah, I'm one of these people that always gets really concerned. I always get really yeah. confused about this. And like here shade as well. Should you bother using shade? Yeah, here I am saying great lighting and then I'm not telling you what to do. No, um, no, not so, at all. <laughs> not harsh sun. Um, I would say if it's So I'll give like a couple of scenarios. I think so when I did mine, it was a pretty sunny day, but the sun was maybe like behind something. So I didn't have, you'll notice that if it's like behind a tree with a lot of branches and leaves that the sun is coming through, you all of a sudden get like speckles all over your face. So you don't want the sun like facing you. With iPhone cameras, you also don't necessarily want bright light behind you because the iPhone just does not have the capability of exposing for both things. So I would say um, sun- ideally a sunny day where let's say your house is blocking the sun, but it's like a bright blue sky everywhere else. So you're getting really good kind of just like ambient light around you. Or if it's a cloudy day and you really need to take photos that day, look for there's a free there's free apps i have one called sun seeker and it'll show you where the sun is in the sky if you can't tell when it's cloudy on a cloudy day find where the sun is and face towards the sun because even though it's cloudy you're still going to get that light coming right to you if you on a cloudy day have your back to the sun you're going to get like bags under your eyes and dark circles and things so um nobody wants that in their photos so yeah i would say on a sunny day it's best if you're in an area where it's like open shade they call it where it's like you're not in direct sunlight um there's not really direct sunlight around you but you're getting that nice really just like ambient light i love that that's some really good tips because i am the kind of person who would just be like hey where's the sun and just not really bother and then look at the photos later and be like oh this is awful I completely wasted completely wasted my time there um have you got any other tips for us about taking your own your own images I know we've covered a lot but just in case there was any other nuggets do you have got any other tips about taking brand images of ourselves yeah I would just say keep it simple at first I mean that's my advice for almost everything when it comes to business or anything is keep it as simple as possible do what feels good for you and again let the focus be on how you want to feel, how you want to feel in the photos, how you want other people to feel in the photos. Because when you put your focus there, you're less concerned about some of these other little perfectionist things that at the end of the day probably don't matter as much. Um, But yeah, I would say just really focus on the feeling. If you already know your brand, if you're offering products and working with clients and you know exactly what your brand kind of is as a whole amazing lean into that for these photos if you're just starting off and you're like I just want to build connection and trust with people keep it really simple use these tips that we talked about today um and yeah and you'll be good to go amazing I've just thought of a final question actually as you were as you were saying that um I know we mentioned Canva but are there any because what I don't want is anyone to go away and be like gosh I've got this amazing photo how do I go about editing it have you got any other like apps that you could recommend anyone to edit their amazing photos once they've taken them in yeah so I use um and you can actually buy so I use Lightroom mobile they have a mobile app for your phone I use Lightroom for my editing on my computer, but for the mobile app, they keep it pretty simple. You can purchase for like a few bucks some presets. So if you go online and like Etsy, for example, and search Lightroom presets, you can see people who have 
presets already created. So that way, when you have your like raw photo that's straight out of camera one, you can apply some presets to edit it and kind of color correct and see which ones you like. I think Lightroom Mobile also allows you to, or maybe it might be Photoshop Express app might allow you to remove the background. It's not quite as easy and user-friendly as Canva, but there is a way to do it if you want to do it on your phone. Um, I would say everything else is like using the Photoshop on the computer, but I don't recommend that for anybody who's not looking to uh, to make it complicated. So I would say if it's specific for background remover, I would highly recommend Canva. For editing photos, yeah, Lightroom Express um, on, the, on the mobile app works really well. Um, that's probably my go to for that amazing am, am i right in thinking as well that lightroom express is free for the mobile app am i, I right? believe so i'm sure I the app pay... is free i'm sure it is yeah I'm yeah double check that but no that's really good that's really great t- tips because i think sometimes you know we can have these photos and then if you're like me and you've just got like the basic apple editing you're like oh can't yeah. we do that it, much for yeah. that it's... and it really can even just a pre-purchased preset it's a lot of p's a pre-purchased preset can really make a big difference on the photo when you add a little bit more dimension and color to it as opposed to like the because what typically happens when you're is when you're in open shade it kind of gives a blue you get a little bit of a blue vibe to your photos so it can really help to warm it up using a preset that gives it a little bit more warmth Absolutely. And a preset where somebody actually knows what they're doing when they've yeah. created that as opposed to, I don't know, Just I always like... made, it, like, make myself look jaundiced or like really red in the face. I get really over enthusiastic with, you know, <laughs> changing the things, those little settings and what have you. This has been so amazing. I have enjoyed this so much, Krista. Thank you so much. We've had some really, really invaluable tips for any of our lovely lazy girl community to go out and create some really amazing images for podcast artwork, which is so, so exciting. Thank you so much. Before we go though, I want you to plug your podcast. Yeah. So you, it's called, she calls her shots. You can find it on any of the platforms. Um, we have over a hundred episodes talk a lot about really building a business with ease and flow. That's kind of the, the main purpose. So if you are a business owner, um, could be a really great place for you and i'll have that linked down in the show notes as well so that anyone who wants to can have a listen in on that otherwise krista thank you so much for joining us today i've had so much fun and it's been a pleasure to chat to you yes thank you so much this was so great thank you for joining us for another episode of the lazy girls guide podcasting before you go i would love it if you could smash that five star review button on whichever podcast player you are listening to this on happy podcasting and i will see you next episode hey wait don't go just yet if you are still waiting to hit that thousand download milestone and beyond remember the lazy pod club is where podcast dreams come to life Visit veritysongcon.com slash membership and I cannot wait to see you on the inside.